Hello everyone, today we've got an intro because we're gonna just go straight into the next topic. When I played the ranked games today, I got insanely upset that a piece of utility, like a Sage Wall, is smarter than my teammates at Immortal 3 level. So, what do I mean by that? When a defensive Sage is playing Fracture, she typically puts in a wall, just like this, at the beginning of every round. And that typically gets so much value, it's insane, because the attackers never understand what to do with that wall. What you should do? Shoot it. Now, why is the question? So we're gonna go into development to explain to you why is it so important to break that piece of utility. This is a, let's say, a standard setup of an attack towards A side with a five-man split, while the, the, the defenders have a very standard default setup for the defense. So the breach and raise are playing for controlling A side, in this spot here and uh the jet is there to support the race and they probably just gonna take aggressive stance here uh if they need to now on the a side uh sorry on the b side sage goes for the defensive wall while Kildred just controls this side with an alarm bot and a turret that might be watching either long or arcade now when the round starts let's take it let's uh, let's assume this is a pistol round and when the round starts and those players are pushing into long b Right? They are going like first tempo, and those players are also going first tempo. The Sage literally counters this entire push, because what will happen is she walls up onto, uh, onto Arcade. Those players, too, have huge issues in destroying it, because it has 400 HP, and they have pistols, so they need to sacrifice like two clips each to destroy that. And because of that, the Sage is able to reposition to dice for the duration of the wall when it's not being destroyed, and help these Killjoy to stop the push or help get kills with a 2 versus 3 instead of a 2 versus 5. So essentially, the Sage Wall literally eliminates, gets temporary frags for the Sage. Think about it this way. Those people are absent if the wall is still up. So it's like a 2v3 in this area, right? 2v3 in this area, but also the fact that the wall, the longer the wall stays, the longer the information are being gathered by the defenders, and that means... When the sage, when the sage fights with Killjoy, every second ma every second matters because then the players from A can also just push from the back and have a pinch against the players in main. What would happen if the players instantly delete the wall, or what needs to happen for the players to delete instantly the wall? The players from main they shouldn't push for tempo. What they need to do is to listen to a call, be like, all right, there's a sage wall on Arcade, which is the, would be the report from KO or from Cypher. We need to destroy it before we go to site. Then those players that are free on main, be like, okay, we'll wait. So they are waiting, they're playing default, waiting till the wall gets destroyed, when the players from, from Arcade uh, are gonna give you that info, right? And that's the moment when this wall is get, getting destroyed, those people can do a simultaneous pressure with the players from side, from long, and that will allow you to have less defenders be ready for you, right? So you have a more efficient attack. Instead of a 2v3 from the defenders, it's going to be a 2v5, right? Because you don't also need to get that info early on. You can just maybe wait out the wall, play default. You know, like we can, let's, let's assume, all right, another example. Let's, let's assume this is the same round, but on a full buy round, and those players are going into uh, A site, right? Let's maybe swap the agents a little bit. Let's do it this way, like this, so it's more probable. And the setup is the same, right? We have three players pushing into A main, one player into going into dish. Cypher is lurking into arcade, and he hears the sage wall. First thing that he needs to do, he needs to come that there's a sage wall there on arcade, because what does this do? If there's any noise, being done on like multi by multiple people on A main, right? And those people are reporting back to Sage and Killjoy, the Sage instantly over-rotates. Because she has the Sage wall. That means that there's gonna be one more defender than there should be on A site, while the Cypher is essentially dead. If he instantly, instantly destroys the Sage wall, and the situation is the same, right? We do pressure on A site, and dish, and the players are hearing that, so they know that there's a push, and the player destroys this sage wall on A, on Arcade, then the sage has two options. She knows that there's one guy that is lurking, 
And if she over-rotates, that means that she's leaving the Killjoy to mercy of the Lurker, or she needs to stay and not over-rotate unless the players on A side actually commit to the side, and those players are playing differently. And that's just only by destroying the, the, the wall that is on the arcade. If you leave it up, you essentially get free informations, and the, the over-rotations will essentially just stop almost every single push. And in rank, that is just never happening. Freeing up space is just such an important aspect of the game that is so overlooked by many ranked players. It's absolutely insane. It's the same with icebox on uh, with traps on kitchen. Today at Immortal 3, I literally said to my sofa, I typed in my Twitch channel in chat, typed in as well the comment exclamation mark anti trap, which is a clip of like 40 seconds of two lineups for sofa that I created and it took me like 5 minutes, for the Sova to use shock darts at the beginning of the round from two positions to destroy the kitchen traps. It's the same idea. If there's the kitchen trap in icebox, right? Let's, let's just make the comparison. It's the same as a sage wall, essentially, but it's easier to destroy. There's a tripwire here on icebox, and the Sova has a lineup from here or from here. And when he destroys this trap every single round with just a shock, a shock dart, that means that the players that are defending this, the, the map lose map control because now they have absolutely no idea if someone will be in kitchen. It's such a basic knowledge that it blows my mind that I have to explain this. But I, you know, to explain this to immortal free players, that's what I mean, right? If you're lower ranked or you just don't have many experience in tactical FPS, this is something that you need to learn. And it, it's not like a simple concept. But for players that are at higher level and have many years of experience in CS as well, this is something that should be common knowledge. Unfortunately, it's not. The same example is on split. When we play split and you have the Sage Wall in mid, it's imperative for the attackers to be able to destroy it fast every round. Because if you have a A push, right? You have like four players going A fast and the Astro looks mid and she doesn't destroy the wall. That means that the players from, uh, from B will over rotate towards A and they will never have to worry about their backs. So they can literally just focus with more players again on the push that is happening on A. So it's imperative to destroy the sage wall. It's even more imperative to destroy any kind of utility that you see in front of you, like sage walls, like traps, like alarm robots, like turrets, when you play a default. If you don't know what is default, please rewatch the uh, Lotter Lab episode that is touching upon that subject. It's insanely important to understand micro and macro objectives in the game which help you gain map control. And this is one of those very crucial aspects of the game that is somehow overlooked by the community and not being utilized the, uh, the same, to, the, to the maximum extent. And what is even more important is that, please remember, not every round has to be a five-man push onto B or A in the first second of the round. Playing slower doesn't mean playing smarter, but playing more patiently might give you a little bit more information about what is happening on the map. There are, of course, rounds when you want to push five men to catch people off guard, but if you condition your opponents that you're always five men pushing and never destroying a sage wall, then you're essentially just griefing yourself by going into stacks. Thank you for watching this episode. It's a little bit shorter because the topic is a little bit shorter as well, but I think it's such an important aspect of the game. Hopefully you guys learned something, and see you guys next time.